Well, that's a, yeah, maybe. Now you're on the ball. <laughs> now you have to watch your language, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, welcome to the April meeting of the Perry County Planning Commission. Um, in addition to those who are present in the room, we have a couple members online. Uh, who is online? Well, Tom Tom is the only uh, Planning Commission member, Tom Groppensberger, okay. and, and Steve Deck, the Executive Director of Tri-County, is running the logistics of the uh, virtual meeting. All right. Tom, are you hearing us okay? Everything good on your end? Yep, sounds good. Okay, thanks. All right, so the minutes of the March meeting have been circulated. Are there any comments or corrections to the minutes? I move that they be approved. Thank you. Second. A second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. All right, opposed? <laughs> <clears throat> All right, we don't have any guests tonight. Um, so we'll move down to communications. Anything that outstanding that you want to bring to our attention, or does anybody have any questions regarding any of the, the letters? Mr. Chairman, I don't have anything I need to bring to the commission's attention, I don't feel. Um, okay. <clears throat> Nobody has any questions. We'll move on to. Uh, if anybody has any questions following the meeting, needs any follow up, please get in touch with me. Uh, just, just a quick question on the. Uh, I asked this last month. But remember the Three Springs Church subdivision? Is that everything finalized? All the T's dotted and everything across the I's dotted? Yeah, Dave, I, I was contacted by Zach Lupold, the surveyor, for that, uh, for that subdivision. Um, I advised Zach with a letter that um, all of the items were um, received for the conditional approval and that the time clock has started for the 90 days to get it recorded. So he needs to bring it in whenever he gets a chance. And that would, that would actually enable him to actually um, get it recorded. So all he needs is his signatures on it at this point. So it sounds like that's going to come to fruition. Sure, sure. Yep. Thank you. We'll get you on here in a couple minutes, Roger. Okay. Um, payment of expenses, page seven. $525 to Tri County. Is there a motion to uh, pay the expenses? So good. Second. I'll second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Um, all right. Um, so we do now have a member of the general public here. Um, are you here on a a plan? Yes. Which is at the uh, Stoltzfus? Stoltzfus. Yes. Correct. Now, I, I kicked out um, Roger's response to the commission today. I don't know if anybody had a chance to see that. It's kind of, yeah. So there, this was a comment sheet. I can pass that around. That's my only copy in the file. And then. But he has responded to this. Yeah, those are, the, those are the responses that Roger provided me um, to the questions um, with a review report so roger if you have that updated plan if you want to lay it out for the commission to see do you have multiple copies that you can share no, I only got one. all right i'm going to give this back to you so you can inform us what's still remaining okay. for, for that <clears throat> you have a copy for me the co the just just the one set i mean you're, you're welcome to it roger i mean is there anything that you well well yeah i mean there's a couple of things i just wanted to touch upon um we do have we do have the dep approval letter for this um so that's that's been approved by dep for the so the soils testing on the site okay um I, I i guess roger says that the plan is at the conservation district 
for the review of one of the lots. It's lot, lot four is the only one that they're actually building on at this time. So um, okay. that's this, yeah, that one right there. Yeah. So, yeah, the second one. Yeah, that has the existing contour. So, I mean, a lot of the a lot of the comments have been addressed from the uh, the review report, um, and we do have comments back from the township, and that was one of the attachments that I sent with the uh, the information, the DEP letter, and in the municipal comments. Now, what what did the municipal comments say? Okay. Thumbnail. So they they're concerned about the site distances with the driveways. This is a PennDOT road. State road. Yep, this is PennDOT road. Have you applied for um, HRDs yeah, yet? Yeah, we have the <coughs> distance chart on there. That, that just, okay. Right. So that, yeah. that has the visibility um, from each of the locations. But have their applications been submitted by Stoltzfus's? Not yet. No. They'll, they'll, um, would that would that would be would that be something that you know the commission could maybe take into account as a consideration with a conditional approval? Is that something that they could supply them with? I mean, I mean, I think the ordinance calls for the actual permits at this time, but it well, might I know be. We, we have approved stuff in the past subject to them. Getting the HOP. Well, it does have the pen dot note on the plan. Um, I think at a minimum you got to have the application though for the file to show that they're applying for it. What does the note say? A highway occupancy permit is required pursuant to section 420 of the Act, well, the Huckabee Highway Act, known as the State Highway Law, as amended by Act, blah, 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 before access to a state highway is permitted. That covers this. Yeah, but it doesn't say anything as to it has been applied for or it hasn't been applied for or no. I mean, my on a lot of that kind of stuff, my it concern is, that the permit is, needed, is needed, you know, general it's... public, and that doesn't really tell anybody. It's, is is that language our language? Uh, no, that's the state language. That's in state the, language. that's in the state municipalities planning code. And, and it's carried down into the, the ordinances. Um, Seems to me it ought to say, and then has been applied for as of the time of recording this plan or something that sort of alerts somebody, but if, if that's state mandated language. <laughs> well, just, uh, I'm looking for like conditional approval upon, you know, getting that, yeah, okay. that one for lot four. And while they're out there, they'll have to do- For the other lots. That, well, that would be basically not sold at the time of the recording. I don't see the other two are existing, but we still checked them. I don't know if they have to update their permit or not, but the one for the house lot is existing and then the one- That one's existing, but what about lot three? It shows- the, the one, the other one that we have to apply for. And then it's gonna be the, um, is there a number with the house lot? Is there a HOP with that particular lot? No, that's been there probably before the road was. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't look like sight distance would be an issue on that one. I, the only question I had was was on was it lot one there? I don't know what uh, I mean. And if that already has an HOP, then. And apparently they got through the site distance. There's a little bit of a curve curve there, and if site distance is is hindered, that's that's the typically the bigger issue on the HOPs. I don't think I think this is a what 35 mile an hour um, roadway. Yeah, yeah. You, you're 45. Right 45. 45. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The, yeah, the that'll. Needs, uh, a pen doctor took over from Joe Burton Senior. Who's Lucas Fowler? That's what I asked for. Me, but. Okay. Hello, Roger. Good. I'm out here. I'm out here. Hey, <laughs> I can't tell where sound comes from. <laughs> See you, Randy. Um, 
a couple of the other things that I I looked at for comments on this, in addition to the HOP, and and that's obviously that's the township's concern. Um, the um, the final grading plan, but I guess it's not supplied because it is under an acre of disturbance is proposed. So no NPD NPDES permit would be required. Um, is there any documentation that we can get for the file from the conservation district regarding you submitting to them to for them acknowledging the receipt of it or something that we can actually put with the file? Sure. Okay. All right. I, I would like to have that. Um, the <clears throat> the other thing is there's a there's a driveway on the far western end of the property that goes back to the adjoining houses that are right next to the property line there that doesn't appear to have any type of right of way agreement or any easement associated with it. Is there any documentation in a deed that there is reserved access no. there? No, because only, only that one, that one individual uh, that lives back there uses that driveway. That's not part of our subdivision. It's not being used by a, it, did, did we have a situation like that with another plan not too long ago for Tom or somebody that that had a like a, a farm lane or something that went back through a property and whether they were going to continue to use it and reserve that right of use or I, I can't remember but it seems like there was something there along those lines that maybe you know, the commission said that's between the two landowners. So I was going to say, my recollection that is is that our position was I, in, we don't North control North that, Borough. and it is what it is. Was that that Northtown Borough? Place? I I can't remember, Dave. It was. I think there was a. It might have been, yeah, because I think there were. I think there was a right away that was that, that was it a, was it a Burgett plan? Yes, yeah, that was Burgett. Yeah. It was part of the more property yeah. when you're thinking of okay all right um <laughs> yeah because if i mean what well, you're saying that, th that this stub goes back here somewhere to some other property well, yeah, it, yeah it, right. it's not really displayed but the the, the driveway comes and hooks over to the right. south yeah. yeah oh well he's got room for anything doesn't he yeah oh does he yeah yeah the this is the same Parcel. That looks like the property that no, goes back to there. I guess I was looking. At, it's the same guy. He's he's landlocked. Well, it's he owns. Unless the, he has property that fronts on a road on the back side. It's, so it's the it, same name on both of these pieces. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, here's he, the. He, that's all they have for driveways right here. That's what they've been using for the house, and then this goes back. Oh, I thought we were on. No, here. I was talking about that one over here. Which one? This one that this one. one. That driveway. Oh, that, driveway. that. I think it's some kind of right of way to well, Township Road well, to it's Isn't that existence. where the old speakeasy was up in here? I don't know. Was it an old, was it an abandoned road that that's been it's pretty well established? Yeah. Yeah, I think it goes up to many cabins. So if I'm not mistaken, yeah. In that, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe it was a former township road, in which case there would have been a right of way that would have been conveyed back to the landowners as part of that abandonment. If it was, if yeah. it was abandoned, yeah. you know. But I don't, I, I don't know. And that's what you know. If there's any type of documentation on the recording for that, you should probably put it on there, Roger, because that's that's something that kind of. And falls back on this landowner. Well, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's the end of the township's responsibility for the, for this road. It doesn't continue. Right. It's all private from there on, and that's been established for many, many years. Like there's farms back in there that I think they use. Do you, do you have a lot of people on that? A lot of different farms, I think, are attached. <clears throat> I don't see anything back there. Unless no. it comes back and flares off of this down through that lane or something. 
the anchors. Just not see anything on Google Earth that would suggest uh, there's an old railroad that used to be back in there too. It's pretty much no. mountain ground. Does it come out down in there? I didn't. I didn't follow it. Looks like mm -hmm. it like Maybe it was an old township road or something. <laughs> I don't know. Like these X. That way. Yeah, well, that could be the old railroad grade too, Mike. And I can't, I don't know where it. You no, know, it used to come it, up that be, valley. Maybe the um, the tax map might have in one. Or whether it went over the. No, you know what? It, it didn't go up that valley because it used to go What's over. The railroad. Yeah, because it used to yeah, the railroad wasn't there. The Sherman, the it, important Sherman it, Valley wasn't back here. It used to go near uh, the southern end of Little Buffalo State Park because you can see the remnants of it over there. Oh, okay. It used to come down the park that road. Was, that was the Newport line. Yeah. That was the, the line from Newport. Okay. All right. Well, that's one that I think that one went to Landisburg. I guess I'll have to. Yeah, I'll have to look at my Haynes history book again. <laughs> <laughs> this one was a, uh, came out of Dunn Cannon. Okay. And went the whole way up and dead ended. The middle. They started to put the uh, through the tunnel middle. through. Right, right. And that used to come up near Swenson's down here too, right? It came well, basically right down here with the firehouse. Okay, not that far down. Okay. Yeah. And then it followed between the summit <coughs> and okay. those lots on right. Barnett Street. So maybe it did come up that valley. Yeah, Barnett Street. <clears throat> so that's basically it um, as far as, you know, the comments go. I, I Did you have any modifications that you were going to be requesting? Um, what did we send it? Waivers or no? I don't have any waiver request sheets. I don't think, Roger. I, I just check. Is there any listed on the plan on the front page? Not on this page. Um, the the monuments there's there's iron pins throughout the the site plan, but there's no concrete monuments listed. Is there any concrete monuments that were found? No. I guess that would be a item that we would need to see. Either monuments, two monuments set. It's supposed to have two two concrete monuments set. Can you do that, or would you be requesting a waiver of that? Uh, uh, no, we'll, we'll, I mean, where would you? Where would you? Two of the front corners, and then two new lots. Yeah. Okay, so central or on the outer perimeter of the subdivision? Probably. Yeah, probably these these two. All right. So that's lot is that lot four? Yeah. Okay. So the front front connecting lines to lot four to the state road. All right. Any other loose ends on this one? Anybody have any questions? Yeah. If not, I guess we would be looking for a motion to Approve contingent on the installation of monuments for the ordinance on receipt of highway occupancy permits for the, uh, I guess, the two new lots. And uh, what documentation were you looking for from the conservation district? Let's start here. The, the letter acknowledging that they they review, they've reviewed the the erosion and sedimentation control plan. Okay. Um, the other thing, there is one other item. Um, it was an attachment. 
there is a diagram regarding stormwater that we're used to seeing on lots that are for new construction for home sites. Uh, the, the one that says you're supposed to run your response spouts into pits. Yep, yep. So that diagram is in the appendices of the subdivision land development ordinance, and we can send you a, that page if you need it. Sure. Um, but, but basically, that diagram needs to go on probably your second sheet somewhere um, for it inclusion. Shows a, I, I shows think, a sketch of a French drain. It, for, it, yeah, I think I already... Had that one okay, for me I I, th I think you used it in the past. So that that basically there's there's a note with that particular diagram that specifies that the landowners are responsible for managing stormwater for the, their properties. All right, so that would be one more condition. Yeah. All right, so are you good on what conditions we have? All right, conditions involve the monument. Installation of the monuments, receipts of the HOP. It's, it's display and installation, so the display of the, the monuments on the plan. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. To satisfy that section in the plan requirements. Um, highway occupancy permits for which lots? I guess it would be two, uh, four and three. Four and three. Yeah. Four and three. Possibly one already has one. It, it's going to be up to Mr. Fowler if he wants HOPs for the other two. Okay. Lot two's existing highway, existing access. Yeah. Okay. All right. So are we good on all those? So that's three lots. There's four, right? There's the resid residual. The residual. Lot one is it, it has an existing access. Yeah. Okay. And lot two. I lot think. two has existing access yeah. as well. Can PennDOT confirm whether there is an HOP permit for those? They, sure. Yeah. I mean, that's. That's where I have to go to. Okay. Yeah. To I, if there's a number with it, just put the number on the plan. Right. Okay. That's time to clean it up. Yeah. That that way they know. I mean, if they ever have to go look for it for themselves, they'll they'll know what number to kind of look for. And okay, so the HOP and then the diagram for the stormwater. Okay. Are those conditions acceptable? Yeah. Yep. Someone want to make that motion? Tom alluded motion. <laughs> Thank you. You got it. Michael? Yep. Okay. Sorry. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Dave abstain. And one abstention. So noted. No modification. Okay. No modifications. Wow. See how easy we are to work with. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you don't need, I'll just take that back. If you don't need it, what do you want? You want this, Jason? Um, yeah, I'll take it for the file. Well, you, yeah. Well, unless you wanted, unless you wanted to make notes on it tonight, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. I have, I have the one for the file for the time being. All right. Hey, Dan. I'm going to ask you. Did you buy a Corvette convertible? It's my dad. It's your dad. Yeah, you bought it from my mom's first cousin. Up in, up in South Dallas. I don't know where they got now. Oh, okay. They had that for 25 years. Yeah, he bought it off of uh, Bill Cameron. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Bill Cameron. We were just talking the other day. He said he had one at one time. I think I sold that to Danny Kirk. He did. He, he did sell that. Not the one my dad had. I bought the one that they used for 
a framework for a play. Yeah. 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 yeah it was all yeah, pretty rough. Right? It's pretty rough. Yeah. I bought it and put it in the barn. You still have it? Yeah. yeah. It, has, it has no transmission no. or engine. It's rough. I, I, I thought it was better than I did. I just bought it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get it. Get as many as Bill has. No. no he's trying to get rid of everything but the one. One or two. We had a few at one time. Oh, well, thank you. All thank right. You. Have a good thank evening. You. All right. Yep. We'll see you later. All right. We'll move on to uh, uh, our treasury report, I guess. Yep. Is there a motion to accept the treasury report? So moved. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Yeah. Mike. Moved and second. seconded. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> All right. Uh, staff reports. LPA is on page 11. Is there anything you need to know there? No meetings. Three. No three. Meeting. Okay, blank page. Yep. All right. Well, we'll move on to. Steve, have you been doing anything, or are you a blank page too? <laughs> no, no, I have to beat Jason. <laughs> <laughs> so, just a just a handful of things. Um, uh, first one is that uh, we are we are this month beginning the update to the regional transportation plan. We're actually going to have like an agency kickoff meeting. Uh, this Friday, and then that that process will last uh, a little over a year uh, into next year. So that there'll be a fair number of outreach meetings. So we'll probably piggyback, for instance, on some of Jason's comprehensive plan meetings, the township supervisors meeting, uh, a, a number of things. So if anybody's aware, you know, you're involved in a group that's engaged in transportation that wouldn't mind hearing what the transportation plan is about and how they can be part of it. Just let us know. We'll, uh, we'll try to attend that. Um, then I, I've been mentioning every month, this safety action plan that we've been doing that work continues, uh, right now this month and next we're actually applying for some of what they call demonstration funds, uh, to do some things relating to, uh, reducing the number of, intoxicated drivers and uh, uh, getting some materials at hand for municipalities that might be interested in trying temporary things like temporary bump outs or bike lanes uh, along their uh, in their community to see how well those measures might um, work and be accepted so more on that if we find out we get funded um, Pats is in the uh, the middle of the uh, TIP approval process. So the month of May is our public outreach uh, month, public comment period um, for the TIP. We will have uh, online meetings, one in the evening, one at lunchtime. The I think it's the second and the fourth weeks of March. Um, I can get you the specific dates and times for those. And then the middle week, we actually do an in-person thing uh, in Harrisburg at Strawberry Square. So um, anybody wants to know more about the tip, again, you can just you can just ask or attend one of those public meetings. Um, not an item that's not really that we're doing it, but just a reminder for everyone, if you didn't know it already, you might remember in the past couple of years, they did a uh, work zone uh, safety enforcement, uh, speed enforcement uh, program across the state. That that program is now permanent. Um, so <laughs> be aware when you're going through the work zones to uh, abide by the speed limits or you stand a permanent chance of uh, being fined for that. Uh, um, Continuing on, a couple of things specific to Jason's activity. He, uh, as you may know, completed his work on the uh, 24 edition of the subdivider developer guide. 
and the community e-data booklet. So those those things are out there and available for folks. And last but not least, we are uh, maybe getting close to midway with the regional growth management plan. We have some population projections and working on the maps for the growth areas moving forward. So that's another item where there will be some outreach to municipalities and others uh, over the coming months to get uh, general consensus on what's going to be the updated regional growth management plan. So with with that, that's my highlights that I pulled out, unless anybody has any questions of anything in the progress report. Any questions for Steve? Okay, thank you. It's just, just to know, it's just sad to, you know, you hear from last night that there was a three fatalities down on that, on I-83. Yeah. yeah. It's just a shame in the work zone. Okay, uh, so we'll move on to uh, unfinished business, county comp plan, anything new on that? Um, we have our, be our third round of uh, work group uh, sessions that will be conducted in May. Um, there will be five, the five work groups will be meeting. So um, if there is something that, you know, obviously HATS is wanting to undertake with our transportation work group, that's, that's uh, might work, you know, this time around. Um, otherwise, we'll probably have another. We'll have the third of the three uh, work group sessions for each of these work groups. Um, probably gonna be later in the year, probably closer to like November, I think, be our next one. But, okay. um, but we'll also in in June we're gonna be looking at doing basically what is going to amount to a a joint municipal advertisement for amending picture Perry to take in all new projects that we've received through the portal and we'll be vetting through the townships and boroughs to see if they want them included or whether they want to um, put them off to the side for now or whether just they, they don't want to consider them. But um, we want to make that process part of an ongoing fluid process for this plan so um well it's going to be basically a trial and error you know see how it goes this time maybe we can learn from you know this first time around how we can do it efficiently and uh and know sequentially what it is we have to do to make sure that it can be done either annually or biannually i think this will be basically a first annual revisit for adoption. Um, and we want to make sure it's as painless as possible for the municipalities. Um, but we also want to offer up a centralized public hearing mm -hmm. that would enable the public to come in and comment, you know, on that, those changes. And we want to advertise, make the advertisement so that people know what these projects are that are coming in or going out of the plan. So. All right. Any questions? Yeah, J Jason, when you, you refer to projects and so forth, you're talking about development, proposed development plans, or what, what exactly you're referring to there? No, I think, I mean, it's it's not just that. Um, we're talking about um, undertakings that, you know, may need funding uh, at the local level. Um, you know, they... If there's a bridge that they want to replace, you know, if they, if they're wanting to, you know, develop an ordinance, you know, things along those lines, it, it could be, you know, a new park or an expansion of an existing park, those types of projects. You know, we also consider the non-for-profits, the fire companies, the ambulance service, if they have any projects. Yeah, we want to make sure that they're included and supported by Picture Perry. So, you know, we, we aren't trying to limit the amount of projects that are coming in we're just basically wanting to hear what these projects are we want to be on the same page so we know what's going on we don't want to be left in the dark so we can't like support these types of projects that come forward um because i you know we we do see on a on quite an occasion different things that are coming in for intergovernmental review 
and how often are they items that we weren't aware that there was a need there and now picture Perry enables us to see what potentially is needed to you know improve Perry County's future essentially and all of the municipalities that partner so that's the aim and you know we I don't, I don't know what we're getting for new projects down in the southeast part of the county because we don't have a lot of participants that have signed on to the plan so you know the more years we can bend and you know they can see the successes that the other communities are you know getting from you know being part of this process you know hopefully they'll come on board eventually but you know we're just trying to save people money and we're trying to make projects known so that if multiple municipalities want to work together on a project you know maybe they have a need that they can share you know whatever it is that is being applied for we could we could you know focus the efforts to multiple municipalities and, and maybe save everybody some money and and time and expense to oversee a grant as opposed to three grants you know it's there's a lot of wins there i think so are we still soliciting feedback on that or is it it's it's open anytime anybody wants to submit projects you know it, that portal is open 24 7 365 you know it's like it's right there that's open to the public. Anybody from the public? Participate? Anybody can, Ryan. Anybody can. We, and then the thing is, it will be vetted through the board of supervisors yeah. or the, you know, borough councils. But I think you know by having eyes on it and more eyes that see it, an awareness comes about. And and it's not like where did that come from? You know, well, it's been in the plan since you know. 2024, here it is, 2030. It's usually the same municipalities that have, or townships that have participated. Um, oh, I don't, I'm not sure. Right now, you mean, Dan? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I've gone out to all eight. Yeah. And I visited one of them. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm not getting like a total, you know, three, three to no type of a vote. I think there's, I think there's support there. It's just, you know, I don't think it's the majority support and you know, that could change over time. Um, you know, it's not, it's not something that I'm giving up on every year. I'm going to be revisiting those eight municipalities until, you know, one or two or however many come online. But I, I have an optimistic view that over time, they will come around. So do we solicit on social media or anything out there? Or our, kind of talk our, like not not along those lines. Like a, hey, it's out here if you want to there's there's that. there's so much misinformation about it. I've yeah. you know I've gone to meetings and like after I've left the meeting and explained that you know mm -hmm. contrary to what was said at the last meeting, you know this yeah. is what the reality is, and you know basically no questions asked by the individuals that laid out those false claims at the meeting. But the moment I leave, they're right back at it. It doesn't matter what I say. And it doesn't matter what the truth is. It's about, it's what's being said is that the county is looking to have control over our municipality, which is total, totally false. It's not about that at all. It's to help them. It is, to, it is to help them. And it, you know, uh, I just, I, I, yeah, it's probably a product of who comes to those meetings more so than the I don't, voice of everybody else. And, and, right. and you don't know what their, you know, background is as far as their dealings with, you know, the county on yep. certain things or even Hats or Tri County because, I mean, that was some of the, you know, the assertions was that, you know, this plan was in some way going to make them be part of the bike share program. Yeah. And it was like, no, yeah. <laughs> no. So I don't know where they, I, they, they got to the website, but they didn't find picture Perry. They just looked at all of the other stuff on there. Yeah. They said that the model ordinances and the toolkit were going to be mandated that, you know, the county or tri-county was going to, 
you know, say that the municipality had to adopt all these ordinances. It's like, no, it's, it's a a la carte menu. They can pick and choose what they want. If they don't want any of it, nobody's going to hold their hands to the fire, you know? So I don't know. You can't change that unless there's a willingness to listen. Don't confuse me with the facts. My mind is made up. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of that going around these days. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I mean the reason the reason I brought that up, Jason, is there's uh, 311 acres. It's going up for auction at the top of Tower Road. Uh, and uh, it, it would it would appear that, that that's going to be a continuation of the cluster that it already exists in in Marysville, um, the Rockville Estates. For is, did Yanks buy it? Um, well, <laughs> there, there were the 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 ad indicated that uh, Perks and Probes would be uh, prepared for the 311 acre site, uh, and I just received information that that came through. Um, on, on their letterhead so they it's it's still up for auction but but I, they they must have a first rights of refusal uh, and if it doesn't get up get up to the uh, uh to, the, to the bid amount but anyway um so one, one would hmm. expect it's going to go that way either way <laughs> hmm. but uh yeah so and and i don't know exactly where that parcel lies relative to the uh county line and and so forth and that's you know, so uh, it, so yeah. would that still be in Marysville, or would it go over Rye? Uh, yes, <laughs> it both. It, it, both. it would continue okay. continue from Marysville out into Rye, which is okay. where uh, Tower Road Tower Road go, is 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 completely within the township. And hmm. uh, so, uh, that's about the same sizable acreage as what Rockville Estates is right now. Yeah. And it's not not exactly the the picture that I think uh, uh, a lot of folks in Perry County uh, <laughs> uh, well, would like that to, and quite honestly, uh, yeah, that and regionally. I mean, when you're talking about the kid of Tinney Ridge, I mean, that's it's it's what they're trying to protect. And and you know, if if DCNR wants that protected, they're going to step forward. You know, that's that's that was what the argument was initially. Is that it never took place with the with the initial plan that came through. It's that piece of property. Yeah, this it's a large, development that's right that's here. Rockville, yeah. That's a big piece. Yeah, it adjoins, it adjoins Rockville. Yeah, that's Rockville. I knew that it's this was nice. being talked about years ago when they were getting into the, the, the whole phase, phasing of uh, Rockville Estates that they were, I know that the uh, Marysville Borough Planning Commission was you know concerned about that area too. Um, and what what would happen, you know, once this is all, you know, approaching the build out? Um, I don't know. They were supposed to put like tanks in Rockville Estate, water tanks up on the top of the mountain or close to it, because they were having water pressure issues in the development. And I don't yeah, know whether sure. that I don't know whether that came to fruition. Um, but yeah, well, the the other thing they can do is just require that each that each homeowner. Uh, provide their own pumps to you know, they get yeah. the, they'll get the water there, but it doesn't have any force. But you really need it for the fire flow, um, right? So they would have had to have done something, um, and yeah. it may be underground. But, uh, well, that's anyway. I mean, since since the, the Rockville Estate started, um, the the actual uh, water supplier for that area was no longer the the borough. the The authority went by the wayside, and it was it was privatized. If you remember, yeah, um, was it PA? Remember. Yeah, yeah PA, PA consumers. Yeah, and then it became this yeah, Valencia, Valencia, or Suez, Suez, and then Valencia, or the new company there. But anyway, all right. Viola. Yeah, Viola, I think it is. Vi yeah, Viola. Thank you, Valencia. Yeah, they're they're pretty large, pretty large outfit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, all they're all they're all uh, all those uh, those privatization uh, um, proposals that took place. Uh, they're they're all increasing their rates uh, bigly uh, to uh, be able to keep up with uh, the uh, the issues that they have to, to update these 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 older systems that that they picked up for, for cheap. But anyway, 
Yeah, that's that's going to be a continuing trend that municipalities are going to have to be dealing with. I'm afraid, you know, whether they can continue to to pay for their their facilities um, and manage them. Um, and some of these communities, they just don't have the the funds to actually pay the people to kind of do that sort of thing. So it kind of makes it difficult for them. And it'd be nice if we could get get um, somebody to actually do that job for multiple municipalities for a really good paying wage or something that would keep, you know, kind of a viable arrangement because it, you are, you're like with all these other um, services that you have that are privatized, that you're at the mercy of those changes. And um, it doesn't seem like the, you know, it doesn't seem like the PUC, like, caps off any of that sometimes you, you would think that it would be like a cap on a given year for what they could raise the rates but it's i don't know some of the percentage increases are kind of scary and they're not buying them for the, out of the goodness of their hearts all right <laughs> move on to uh, hazard mitigation anything new on that we're going to have a front-end meeting with the consultant uh, early in may um and then we're going to be probably going into some steering they might even consider that a steering committee meeting and pull every um buddy on the initial steering committee in um but uh look for that to get up and running here shortly and if anybody's interested in participating in the hazard mitigation plan process, feel free to reach out to me and I'll I'll make sure that we include you on the steering committee contact list. Did anything ever happen to that house that they were gonna elevate out of the floodplain? Is that a, a dead issue at this that, point? I think at the time I think it was uh the funding for it. The the applicant would have to come forward with paying for a surveyor, an engineer to establish like a base flood elevation. Right. And, you know, the, Pima, Pima was able to like get some generalized information, but as far as, you know, what would, you know, be required for leveraging the funds from FEMA through the program, um, I think they would have required a little bit more. And I think that's where the surveyor came into the, to the mix because they would have to establish that base floor elevation that would be something that would be um, an acceptable level and then then would come the expense of elevating you know in determining what that cost would be so the builder would have to know that base floor elevation first then they could say it's going to cost x to raise it and it i don't know if there was a if the cost benefit for it was such that it would be hard for them to get the grant, I don't know what, but it, it was left back in the Lawler's hands to actually come up with um, whether or not they wanted to proceed. And I, we hadn't heard back from them. Just so. curious. All right, um, is there anything new on the cap implementation? Um, no, we didn't have a meeting this month. All right. We want a new business. We got the approvals taken care of. Uh, ordinance revision for Bloomfield Borough. Oh, um, yeah, so that was a new Saldo. It had a staff review several months back and, um, Basically, I've, I went through my, my notes from the prior review of the, the ordinance, and without going through all of it, um, I did send this out as a draft for consideration before the meeting. Um, but uh, there wasn't anything of real substantial concern with the ordinance okay. other than, you know, just some recommendations to consider. So, um, but the commission would be supporting um, the adoption of um the proposed ordinance after considering those comments. All right. So we need a motion to authorize sending that letter of review. So moved. Is there a 
for a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, opposed? Okay, so we got the uh, motion carries. Um, municipal reviews. Anybody have any questions on any of those? They're on page 18. Is uh, Chuck Bird subdivision over there on Shortcut Road? Yes, that's the property. I think that he's been talking about a solar project on maybe. Uh, okay. Maybe. Let me just. What's the Greenwood Ag project? Uh, let's see. This is Charles. Uh, the Greenwood Ag Project is a Sean Good property on Reward Road, to south of Reward. The village. What you gonna do? Two pick two uh, poultry operations. It's barns. Or in a whole way, I want to smell it. Yes. There's there's the there's the location. It's right here. So there's Reward. Looks like they're down here. Here's the building. They used to they used to provide like dimensions on these, and I don't know whether or not um, as part of the permitting process in the uh, NRCS they're they're requiring them to like show that much detail anymore, but they're starting to connect them too. But the the actual with that the um, the actual square footage for the two buildings is uh, fifty eight thousand nine hundred and seventy nine square feet. It's a lot of chickens. No, it's about eight eight point nine acres of disturbance. There's a lot of contour changes. You got you got buildings, the chicken chicken buildings that big. If you could put solar panels on that, you got leases on both of those facilities. Uh, if there's a way you couldn't co, you know, come up with some co benefits, um, dual leases in terms of the roof roof area for solar panels that could be integrated into the structure. I think there's I, some, some potential there that's uh, going. And how long are the structures good for? Uh, those, those to... chicken structures that yeah. they're tip they're typically uh, 20, 40 years. They would have to be oh, beefed up. There's no there's no doubt about that. Yeah, one change yeah. cycle for the one change one change cycle for the actual panels themselves, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's almost perfect. Yeah, yeah I mean it works out. And and like I say, if they've got to beef up the structure in order to to carry the panel. Uh, and, and use the panel as as part of your roof structure, uh, and, then uh, you you kind of get the best out of both, and you have the, the least least systems anyway, and and so uh, just just a, a way that kind of without taking uh, taking the land areas, uh, there's an opportunity where in the intensive uh, CAFO areas where where that I think could be done pretty uh, handily. Yeah, that's a good suggestion, Tom. Makes sense. <clears throat> probably never have. <laughs> I sat in sat in on uh, Chesapeake uh, Bay, had a, uh, a solar um, presentation with the Penn State folks uh, today uh, in Virginia, and uh, they've got they've got some pretty good ideas. It's sim simple things like no grading on these sites. They use they use um, um, universal joints to connect connect the panels so so that uh, you don't you don't have these level beams uh, going across. You have universal joints between your connections, 
that allows allows the panels to to fluctuate with the terrain. Uh, still, still pretty much on contour, but but if you have these little dips and valleys and so forth uh, uh, across uh, your panel array, then there's ways to ways to set those those uh, uh, pier posts uh, and use a universal joint on the top, and and then your beams, your carrying beams, then uh, uh, will will move uh, in 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 yeah multiple directions in order to to uh, you know provide. Uh, provide a no no grading type uh, approach because uh, Virginia was just you know they're coming in there like new new uh, housing developments and regrading entirely and creating all kind of erosion and not stabilizing and so forth so anyway yeah. some new new approaches occurring out there just a little common sense things that tend to work but anyway so we, we may we may be back to uh, revising some of the ordinances uh suggested mm. ordinance there jason but uh, it's a matter of keeping up with the uh, it's a moving target but uh, anyway no. good stuff yeah i mean that our, near our model solar ordinance might be some, something that we could kind of plug into that to do a modification to it to allow it or facilitate that kind of piggybacking of, of uses yep okay yeah and, and that way that the the agricultural folks make out because they're getting they're getting dual, uh, you know, dual benefit, uh, and I say you get the co co benefits and and, uh, and with similar similar lease arrangements. So that that's uh, best for them. They, they do the same thing on the roofs of all the warehouses. Like I know. In Central Pennsylvania. Imagine how much electricity that can generate. Sure. Hmm. All right. Uh, so I guess we need a motion to. Uh, Ratify. ratify staff's comments on <clears throat> on those reviews. Second. 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 Any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed carries. All right. Uh, speaking of solar. I uh, see so you reviewed Liverpool Borough. Yeah, and that, that's also we we didn't have a review on this beforehand, but it is a solar um, energy systems ordinance, and uh, it looked like they were basically kind of trying to um, utilize the model uh, for guidance. So it's kind of like a standard move it through. Um, Accept their um, proposed ordinance to amend the overall zoning um, to include this use. All right. So, good that somebody's using the model. Yep. So, is there any, anybody, anybody have any questions on that? Is there a motion to authorize sending out that review? Second. 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 Discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. And uh, Bloomfield fences and walls. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, not too long ago, Bloomfield uh, went through their process of updating their zoning ordinance. Um, then I guess they recognized that they had no provision in there on uh, fences or walls. So they wanted to make sure that they included that too. I think for the most part, they were grabbing um, information that we, we do find in the model ordinance, zoning ordinance. Um, there are a couple of things in there that uh, um, were omitted that we kind of pulled from the, the, uh, the model when we were doing the review and uh, we're suggesting, uh, namely one of these, one of the items, uh, for instance, was a, uh, uh, the barbed wire fencing appeared to be allowed in all districts, and I don't know if you really want that in a borough setting. So, um, I think of a couple of neighbors that would like that <laughs> barbed wire. Oh. Yeah, so so that was one of the things that we kind of touched upon. But uh, you know, this this was a uh, it was it was interesting. I, one of the things too, and I don't know whether this might be something that the commission might want to have me change. I don't know, but. Um, a fence uh, four feet in height in the front yard seemed quite substantial. I don't know in a borough setting whether you'd want a four foot high fence in the front yard, but you know they they had um, that kind of laid out 
Um, most of the ordinances that I saw, and I think our model was suggesting something along the lines of three foot. Um, I don't know if we want to split hairs on that or, you know, whether to just leave it and strike the, the bullet, but um, I, I just put it out there because that was kind of one of the things that I was, you know, considering encouraging a reduction down to 38. They, they can obviously decide what they want to do, but um, I don't know if it's kind of the same opinion of the commission. Can you visualize what, you know, four foot picket fence in the front yard would look like versus something that's, a little bit shorter. I don't know. I don't you know. had a recommendation in there, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are you all right with that? Uh, yeah. Uh, I was just going to say traditional is probably the three three feet, but uh, uh, technically uh, Americans and, and folks, uh, gener additional generations are getting taller, so... <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, doing all the zoning hearing board work I did over the years, the big issue on height of fences, even in, in the front yard, I have a bunch of zoning variants here, you know, on that is dogs. Oh. And it's the dogs that are getting bigger. And they can a, leap a, over. A three foot fence is not much of a. Oh. I know if my dog yep. wanted to go over it, that three mm -hmm. foot fence would not stop them. Yeah. Yeah, animals are pretty resilient like that. Hmm. But, you know, it's up, ultimately, I guess the borough will decide what they decide. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's... All right. So, um, I guess we need a motion to authorize sending that letter of review. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Yep. All right. Uh, motion carries with one abstention. Um, sewage facilities for Carroll Township. Anything of any importance on that that we need to know about? Uh, <clears throat> this is Bella Terra. That's that development down in Carroll Township, if you remember, as kind of like a uh, a long, actually, it's, yeah, it's a single entry point, and there's what is there, 15 lots back in there, approximately. And uh, yeah, there's just a loop here. Now they're, they're proposing to subdivide these lots off, and there's five. One has the house on it, and um, the they one, the one between the front and the yeah, the, the one is a corner lot with the, the township road down here at the bottom. And then the other ones are coming off from Bellaterra Road itself. So um, they did do a subdivision a while ago that had frontage on the township road. Um, but these are going to be coming off of this. And, uh, you know, when we were reviewing that, and I think that was a couple months ago, it was reviewed for the subdivision portion. Um, and at that time, it was pointed out, you know, if there's a homeowners association with this development, that they be worked into that agreement. So, because I, it still wasn't a township road, and I don't think there was an acceptance of it as a township road, or it was, it might have been dedicated, but it, that's the as far as it went. Um, so, obviously, they're going to have to have funding, and the people need to continue to put money into making sure that road is repaired and maintained as well as the stormwater facilities within the development too. So, yep. So that's just a ratification. All right. Any questions on that? They are on lot septic systems. You know, they're not connected to any municipal or package system. Mm. All right, is there a motion to uh, ratify those comments? Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Harry uh, Bill wants to buy a, what, a leaf sucker rubber? <laughs> leaf and debris. Yeah, vacuum. Road vacuum. Uh, <laughs> I take it we were supporting that. 
Oh yeah, yeah, it's they're pretty pricey. But uh, the the one thing to keep in mind is Marysville is the only MS4 community in the county that has that designation. So this apparatus will help them document maintaining their street system free of pollutant potential pollutants that could enter the waterway. So uh, by by maintaining a, a good clean street system that helps them document, you know, their pursuit of reducing their overall nitrate and phosphorus mm -hmm. contributions to the, the bay, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, they particularly have to do something special with them, spread them in a the field or do something to keep in this? I think, yeah, they might have a designated place where they have to, you know, return that or get it you know, in an area that's not going to immediately go right back into, can't dump it by the creek side or anything like that. Definitely. Yeah. Are they? Is this is this a vacuum truck uh, for uh, cleaning sediments out of the uh, in, inlets as well? Um, I don't know about that, Tom. That's a good question from Borough Council. I don't think. Let's just look here. Well, I, they did give me a specific uh, sheet for it. Um, yeah, I mean, says it it's, leaves, a, it's, it's leaves a CDL. So it it does it does look like it has a hose on the side. It's a it's called the CDL exempt system. It's the most flexible truck mounted debris collection system. Huh. Single person occupation in cabin controls. Patented eco mode, standard 35% fuel com consumption, compact profile, high capacity, maneuverable in tight areas, reduces li liability, 16 cubic yard capacity, dual steering control standard. What else does it give us here? It's non-CDL. Like it's a, uh, a leaf leaf uh, vacuum for the uh, street street gutters and so forth. Oh, anyway. Yeah, I, looks like a truck. Yeah. Really? Light, lighter duty. It doesn't look like a vacuum excavation truck. Yeah, yeah. The vac vac trucks typically have a, a heavy cylinder on the back. Right. This is a lighter duty the, model. It's still a yeah. truck mounted hose, but still two hundred and thirty nine thousand like dollars. Yeah. <laughs> that just means the real the real vacs are uh, are, are up uh, probably half a million or more. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it says VAC system, three axis boom operated from the inside cab, uh, 11 foot radius, uh, proportional hydraulics, three volt belt drive, uh, 20 inch impeller, new and easy service design, six, three eighths inch blades. Hydraulic pump powered from truck's battery alternator. Yeah. All right. Is there a uh, motion to uh, send that letter of support? Damn. Second. Discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 I already signed that. Oh, did I give you one back? Uh, let's see. This is the library. I the wrong one earlier. That's Bloomfield. I haven't gotten a signature on it. Uh, <clears throat> this, is the leaf and this is the leaf and the gray one right there. It's fine. Oh. I think I got switched. Is it signed? Okay. Looks like my signature right. there. <laughs> Good. Uh, all right, last one. Uh, Bluefield Borough. This is, we talked about this before. Is this a, this different, is a different one. A different grant for the same project? No, this is for a different project. Okay. This is, uh, this, uh, this is for the Borough Municipal Building particularly to service the, the library and to make it accessible, more, okay. more accessible. 
Um, so they are they're applying for the grant that seems like everybody is like targeting this PA broadband development authority grant. And um uh, what does that have to do with accessibility? Well the accessibility element is is um looking to uh provide internet service um to the community as a whole and make it more I guess accessible. The library, library has public Wi-Fi, so it's providing accessibility to that Wi-Fi. Okay, so it's accessibility. It's it's yeah. it, okay. Yeah. Yep. And there's ADA improvements to the exterior. Going I the think. With an elevator and some other things. Yeah. Yep. The elevator is the costly part. Yeah. Yep. But they've always had some issues getting, you know, access down to that lower level. It'll serve. Um, the ramp is so tight. The, the ramp, I think, is current. The current ramp is not ADA compliant by all standards. So this will have double service in that it'll provide current ADA compliant access to council chambers as well as, well as the library. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions on that? If we need a motion to authorize. Sending that letter of support. Second. I heard Tom. Tom, Tom okay. second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Extension noted. No opposition. Motion carries. Anything else for the good of the order? No, we will stand adjourned. Thank you for your attention and attendance. Good evening. Have a good evening, Steve. Tom. Yeah. Take care. End of the ball.